And we'll start in verse 4. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But we could say in reality, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Now notice this. He, here he begins by saying, surely, absolutely, without a doubt, he has borne our griefs, carried our sorrows. Now, in just a minute, I'm going to show you God's divine commentary on that statement. But first, let's go first to uh, verse 11. It says, he shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Now, we have no problem with that. He's bore our iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he has poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. He bare the sin of many. So he automatically, now notice these words where it says that he bore our griefs and carried our sorrows, and here it says over and over again that he, he, he bare our iniquities and, and our sins. And those are the exact same words. So that's why I said at the very beginning, whatever he did with our sins, he did with our sicknesses. You can't have it both ways. You can't say, well, you know, technically, uh, yeah, I'm saved, but I'm still sick. Well, let me ask you this. When you got saved, what got saved? Was it, was it your body or your spirit? It's your spirit, isn't that right? It's your spirit. Why? And your spirit was changed instantly. And so you can say you're saved. Why? Because you got saved, but yet it was your spirit. And when he says you got healed, then guess what? You're healed. When you got healed, your spirit received life. But now notice that life goes into your flesh. Now, the beauty of this is this. We've been given the earnest of the spirit. We have that down payment. That's what that earnest is. It's a down payment of the spirit of God, meaning that we now have the down payment of our future inheritance. Our future inheritance, now think about this, our future inheritance is going to be whenever we are in the, uh, as we would say, the manifested presence of God in the sense that we're with him. In other words, whenever our mortality puts on immortality, when we're changing the twinkling of an eye, the Bible says, whenever corruption puts on incorruption. And what does that mean? That means that your body, because your spirit, you listen, your spirit's already incorruptible. It was changed by God, but your body here, now see, here, you still have to fight to stay well. But over there, as we would say, you're not going to even have to fight. Why? Because you're at that point when that happens, your body is going to be transformed and it's going to be glorified and it's going to be immortalized in the sense that you couldn't get sick if you tried. <laughs> now think about that. Now I don't know why you would try, but I'm just saying. It's, <laughs> but you're, you're going to be... Now, think about that. Imagine if you could not get sick, if you just could, if it was impossible for you to get sick. Amen. Okay, why would that be? Because at that point, the Bible says that we, we will be, he will have received the redeemed possession, which is our total being, spirit, soul, and body. That means at that point, your body, listen, when you get over there, you're not even going to have to fight to stay well. Your body, sickness and disease won't even be able to touch your body. I mean, think about that. So you'll be able to be well all the time. But here, now we have the earnest of the Spirit, which is the down payment. So what is the down payment of that divine life, that, that divine immunity? What is that? Well, that down payment is not just divine healing, but it is divine health. Because even in heaven, you're not going to have divine health. Why? Because your body will be immortalized, so it's not going to be healthy or not healthy. It's going to be immortalized. Does that make sense? So it's not going to be, well, we're just really healthy there. No, health isn't a thing you think about whenever you can't get sick. So you're going to be there, and you're not even going to have to think about it. But here, by faith, you can be healed, and by faith, you can live healed. And when you live healed, that's called divine health. Amen? Amen? And that means that here, the enemy can try to attack, but you have that shield of faith which quenches all the fiery darts of the wicked. Every fiery dart. Think about that. 
Now, every fiery dart of the wicked. Now, we know from Acts 10, 38, I just quoted a while ago, out of Acts 10, 38, it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. So we, we know what he did and we know that he went about doing good and that good was healing. <clears throat> Why? Because God was with him. And so now, and Jesus said, it's not me that does it, it's my Father in me, the Spirit of my Father. We know it was by the Spirit of God that Jesus healed the sick. And now that Spirit dwells in us. How do you think he didn't get sick? Because that spirit of God dwelt in him. We know his body could be killed because it was, so his body was not immortal. But, and he touched all kinds of contagious diseases, including leprosy and who knows what other things that they had different names for at that time. Yeah, but he had, he had all these things, exactly. He had all these, these, these opportunities, we would say. And yet none of these, there's not one recorded instance where anything ever jumped on him and, or even that he had to resist it. Why? Because he was always letting that life out of him. Amen. Amen? And that life was always pouring out of him. Mm -hmm. Listen, my goal is not just healing. It's not get, you know, getting the opportunity to lay hands on the sick and seeing them healed. If that was, because that's not, that's not why I'm here. Amen. Amen. See? I mean, if, I mean, think about that. If that was my reason for being on this earth, then I would want to live forever here and never die and go be with him. Why? Because ain't nobody there to heal. I'd be bored. <laughs> Amen? You, you understand what I mean? I mean, think about it. If that was my thing, if that's, if that's really just what got me excited and all that, which, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that I don't get excited when people get healed and, and we see things happen. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying if that's what I live for, then heaven would be anticlimactic because there would be nothing there to do. Right? Except sit around and talk about the good old days when I got to heal the sick and cast out devils and all that. And you know that I mean if you're gonna be there eternity, I mean people can get tired of hearing that. <laughs> Amen. Oh, here he goes again. Yeah. We have to realize the life of God in us. Now we have the earnest of the spirit that we can live healed now. And that living healed is living in a state of health. Amen. <laughs> And if God can, if you can get sick and get healed and get sick and get healed, then you can get sick and get healed and stay healed. Amen. Amen? And that's that, that earnest of the Spirit. Why? Because if he wants us healing the sick, then he wants us not to be sick, and he wants us well so that we can be good examples of what we're preaching. Amen? 